So when you're raising your own food to provide for your family, anytime you have disease hit or crop loss, it can be a big deal. But there's one specifically that's a really big deal, and that is early blight. And the reason that early blight is such a big deal, well, late blight too, but it's any type of anything in the blight family is because the spores will infect the soil and they will stay in the soil for years, which means that you could potentially not be able to grow anything in the nightshade family. So no potatoes, no tomatoes, eggplants or peppers in your garden or on your homestead for years. So at the first sign of any type of blight, you wanna jump on it immediately. It's also why if you have my book, The Family Garden Plan, you know that the crop rotation section is really, really important so that we're not planting anything in this area. But we also need to take measures right now so that it doesn't spread to any of the other crops. So when you're, as a gardener, being out in your garden every single day just to keep an eye on things, so as soon as you see something beginning to develop and start, you can jump in on it is really important. So I was out here a couple of days ago and I noticed that I started to have some brown spots show up on these potato leaves. And then where it gets more significant, you can actually see it's starting to, the leaves are curling up, they're beginning to die here. And thankfully it's only in one small portion right now. So it's only affecting this area of the potatoes. So first thing of attack is we need to remove any of the leaves that are showing any of these spots. Don't ever put them in a compost pile. Don't just, you know, remove them and then put them in an area. These need to be removed. And then I'm putting them in plastic bags because this is actually gonna go in um, our garbage, which is sealed far away from the garden spot so that these spores cannot continue to infect anything. So I'm gonna be having to remove pretty heavily on some of these. In fact, this whole plant, unfortunately, is gonna be like a total loss because it's on every single leaf. I've got spots right here on this plant and I just can't afford to leave this in and have it spread to the rest. So I'm actually gonna dig down and see if there are any potatoes being formed yet on this. I, so I've got a few little baby potatoes here and I'm really sad because these are my fingerlings, but I just can't leave this in. So I'm gonna get a small harvest right now. Whoops, throw in that one. So I'm gonna get a small harvest right now of these fingerlings, but I'm just gonna have to go ahead and pull this up. I can't let them develop any further, which is sad, but it's not too bad because I'm actually gonna get a decent harvest off of these and these will make a great meal. So at least we'll still get a harvest on this year from, from these plants, even though I'm having to pull up some of them right now. Yeah. That whole one too, darn it. Now this one, there's some down here that aren't showing any signs. So I think I'm just gonna prune this back and I'll keep an eye on it. I may be able to leave this one in. Okay, that one looks all right. And I really am trying not to touch any of the healthy plants um, within here, just because I've been touching the diseased ones, obviously, and some of the spores are still gonna be on my fingers. So see, any of these, these are all leaves. You can see how bad those are. Those have all died and fallen. So you wanna make sure you're removing anything like that. Don't let it sit on the soil. So first step is removing all of the disease leaves like we just did. But next, we need to treat everything that's not showing any signs of disease in order to keep it from spreading and developing further. So you've got a couple of options. I'm using 
a copper solution. So this is completely inorganic. And yes, it is a bright blue, but that's very natural. Um, this is what I'm gonna be using. And we're gonna spray everything that's in this area. Oh, there's one I missed. You wanna make sure that you're spraying, obviously, when it is dry out. There would be no point in spraying if you've got a rain coming in. And we'll be making sure that there is no overhead watering or sprinkling of this area. I have soaker hoses to help combat, combat powdery and downy mildew over here on the squash area of the garden. But I had been overhead watering just in this area. And obviously that is not something that we're gonna be doing anymore. So I am going to spray this down and then I'm gonna have to do reapply throughout the whole guard growing season here for these potatoes because we already know that the spores are present and I don't want them to spread any further. So we're just gonna give these a good spray. You can see how devastating this can be to a potato crop because I had to pull out all of these plants. That's how fast it can spread so that it didn't infect the whole crop. But then I've got a pretty big loss. I mean, I should have gotten way more uh, than this had they been at full maturity because many of those potato plants you saw me pulling up, they hadn't even be, really been able to form potatoes yet. So this part is a whole loss, but this will actually help increase airflow. So pulling these out and thinning back some of those damaged leaves will help increase airflow along with this spray. So that should hopefully be enough that we won't lose the rest of this potato crop. And now I know for the next couple of years, whenever I grow potatoes, which will not be in the same spot, we won't be able to plant anything in the nightshade family in this area for three years now, knowing that this has uh, blight in the soil. But whenever I plant next year, I'll know to start treating early because preventative treatment is way more effective um, if you can prevent it rather than once it started to take a hold. So at least this way I'll have a game plan. So for next year, wherever the potatoes are, I will just start spraying them earlier in the season and just have to do that proactively. But I actually have in a different area of the garden, I've got the potato crop that I plant later in the year these actually need to be held up but these are the potatoes that we will leave in the ground over winter so hilling potatoes actually can help with blight and these guys are at the point where i need to begin hilling them up and mounting the dirt around them but this is great because i can begin treating these there's no blight on these yet so i'm going to go ahead and treat these guys a little more air in there and hopefully save this entire crop. So if you wanna have more information on how to organically treat pests and disease in the garden, I've got a blog post on that, I'll link to it below. I also have a couple of videos and if you're interested in the method where we do a later planting of potatoes and actually leave these in the ground all winter long and use the ground as a root cellar and storage system, then you can catch that video right here.